Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the procession is on. Please, all the rock academic staff should please stay in one role. You don't need to scatter. This is a very serious academic matter. So we welcome the procession. Led by the Vice Chancellor, Professor Charles Sukichpu Esmone. Assembly represented today by the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor FJC Odibo. You can see the inaugural lecturer coming in majestically and solemnly as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please may we be seated. Mr. Vice Chancellor and the chairman of today's occasion, Professor Charles Okechuku Esimone, fellow Academy of Science, 
ably represented today by the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor FJC Odibo. They are present. We welcome you. Please let us appreciate our Vice Chancellor, ably represented by the Deputy Vice Chancellor. So we welcome you in as much as you are the one welcoming us. No, no. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may I also welcome to this very special presentation Our former Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Rob Eguato, we welcome you, sir. We also have in our midst Professor Obamuba, former provost, former rector, sorry. Federal Polytechnic, of course. Round of applause for him. May I welcome the Dean of the Faculty of Agriculture, Namde Azikiwe University, Oka, Professor Nkiru Melodo. We welcome you. We also have in no particular order, Professor J. O. Obuago is here. We welcome you. Aina Sigin, no. Our own dear provost is also here. So we welcome you, the provost of our College of Postgraduate Studies, the founding provost for that matter. Professor Sibokwe, we salute you. No, ever, ever resourceful and hardworking. And as again, no, in a special way. The Dean of the Faculty of Education is also here. The Dean of the Faculty of Biological Sciences is also here. We welcome you and we welcome you. Uh, we also have the former rec of Imo State of Nigeria, Professor Emeke Zono. We salute you, former Vice Chancellor of um, Ezekiah University. We welcome you, sir. No. Uh, another inaugural lecturer here present. We welcome you, Professor Mono is also here. We welcome you. I am saying no. Uh, permit me also to welcome uh, dear Professor Emeritus, Professor Amechi Oyeka. We welcome you. I may also inform you that this great lady was the chairman of UNISIC inaugural lecture committee before she retired for many, many, many years. We welcome you, ma. We welcome you. We also have Professor Ifoma Ekejindo. Bro, you are welcome. You are welcome. The secretary of the PhD school is also here. We have litany of names who we'll continue to recognize as we move on so that uh, we don't make the program so boring. Um, Professor Barista Obidima is also here, our own dear Obidima. We welcome you. We say no, no. As I say, people are watching us from all over the world, and uh, we don't want to make it so boring, but permit me to welcome and recognize the chairman of UNISIC inaugural lecture committee, 
Professor Richard Wawin. We salute him. We salute him. We keep on recognizing, please. We keep on recognizing. On this note, I'm the university orator and the dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences, Professor Frank Collins Okafo. Thank you. So may we rise, please, to take the university anthem. The name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord our Father, we cannot thank you enough for giving us this opportunity for this important academic exercise. We thank you especially for today, for our lecturer, Professor Ebunife, who is going to talk to us today on the very important topic. We request you to be with her. Give her the spirit of courage, the spirit of understanding the spirit of uh, precision so as to be able to make her point. Give us also the spirit of listening very attentively so as to get the message. At the end of the day, may we use this message for the good of ourselves, for the good of our country. May you also be with this university as we continue to perform this exercise. At the end, you take all the glory we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much, our own dear Professor Father Ikenga. We salute you. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. It is incumbent on us to recognize in a special way and call to the special table the first family on today's occasion. is from a great family. This is my honor and privilege to respectfully invite the family of Ekunife Ifani Esquire and Chinyel Ekunife to the special table. Please, may we appreciate them. Yeah. 
you can see that the complexions are, you know, white and, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, that go, a very great blend. Invite the chairman on today's occasion and to the glory of God, the vice chancellor of our great university, Professor Charles Sokechuku Esmone, fellow of Academy of Science, but ably represented today by the deputy vice chancellor academic, Professor FJC Odibo, to come forward for the chairman's and Vice Chancellor's opening remarks. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Thank you. The approvals, College of uh, Great Studies. The Dean Faculty of uh, Biosciences, the Dean of my faculty, the Professors uh, Emerita of the University here are present. I don't know why the other Professor Emerita is not there, he is always present in our inaugural uh, lecture, that's a uh, professor, engineer professor, Sam Omey. I hope he is uh, well and sound. I'm surprised that he's not here today. Two, two weeks ago, he was here. I admit he, um, he will uh, come in. Professors of the university here present. It, of the inaugural lecture committee. Other professors from uh, our neighboring university. I recognize a professor, Uche Amazigo. Thank you for coming, bro. It's a pleasure having you around. The family of Pepunife, especially my friend uh, Ifani Pepunife. If I, I think we waited the same uh, day. Yeah, we waited the same day. Ooh, yeah. The, I think people of uh, Ipulobia, they are all here. And uh, gentlemen of the press and our audience in diaspora who are watching us uh, online, you are all welcome to Namdas Ikiwe University. On behalf of the Vice Chancellor, Professor Charles Simone, who had wanted to be here in, in person. To, to come and stand in for him because uh, currently the F and GBC of cancer is uh, beaten. And so he has asked me to stand in for him and uh, also asked me to wish you well and that uh, he is not afraid that uh, you will make a, a very wonderful presentation today. You are welcome to the 83rd uh, inaugural lecture of Unamda Sikiwe University. This has become a ritual. Two weeks ago, I was here for uh, Professor Obidiogu, his uh, inaugural lecture. And uh, today we have also gathered. And I know that in the next two weeks, we will also gather for another inaugural lecture. So kudos to uh, uh, Professor son of Uwakwe, who has uh, 
kept the pace, make sure that the momentum is continuing, and also the university for supporting the committee. Professor Junior Angela Okunife, a professor of parapsychology. A wonderful lady. I even knew her before you found you married her. Yes. Yes. That was when I came into Oka in 1983. She is an astute academic and has done well. I happen to have a superintended over her assessment to the rank of professor. And I know that as DAP that time, she never bothered me to say, Prof, she didn't do that. And uh, of course, at the end, she emerged uh, victorious. And uh, today, you are going to tell us what you have been doing and what you have done that merited you the good work. And uh, today, you are going to tell us about uh, neglected uh, tropical diseases, the urogenital, the urogenital uh, worms, and the war so far. The war so far. Have we conquered the war? Have we won the war? Genial will tell us today. If there is no hope, she will tell us the way forward. And so I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to sit with rapt attention and hear the erudite professor talk on. Uh, the neglected tropical diseases with respect to urogenital uh, one. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor. Thank you so much. The chairman on today's occasion and the Vice Chancellor of our great university our distinguished, respected professors and guests here present. We want to introduce the 83rd inaugural lecturer. Because today is her day, a special day. And today, just like the Vice Chancellor said, she's going to pro, you know, to tell us exactly what made her a professor. So we want to listen to her and we want to learn from her. But I want to call on somebody that will do the right introduction, somebody that will do the citation on her. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to invite to the podium Professor Cordelia Ebenebe. My name is Yenisa. The Vice Chancellor, sir, ably represented by the Deputy Vice Chancellor. Professor FJC Odibo. I wouldn't want to go back to the already established protocols, but I want to say a big welcome to 
to all the professors here present, to our invited guests, and in fact, to the UNICE community. You're welcome. Ah, the professor we are celebrating today happened to be my very good friend. We journeyed together from College of Education to this place. And a funny thing happened when we came. You know, when we came here, we discovered that our salary at uh, Wafor is the College of Education was higher than the first salary we were paid here. And we we're not so happy about it. But I wonder as we were, you know, contemplating over the matter, she said, I have university done. That university done sounded so big in time. <laughs> I say, yeah, let's be university dons. And today we are. And she is going to tell us a lot of things have brought her on this journey to the level of Professor Akada. But before then, I just want to intimate us with a lot of things about Professor Chinyalu Ekunife. You know, initially, when I know her, she used to say, it's not Chinyel, it's Chinyel years ago. If you look at her, you know she's not looking it at all. She's one ageless professor, I know. You know, into the family of San Nicolas and Lady Rosalind Emeju from Uncolofia Village, okay. Uncolofia, thank you. <laughs> The owners of popular Genix bread in uh, on each and in Soka. And funny enough, that Genix bread happened to be on my street factory. So I ate it a lot. I never meet any of the members of that family any day. But we, here we are. We went beyond friends to become sisters. Like young people will say, my sister from another mother. So she became a professor since 2014 in this Nandazikiwe University. She is a scientist that specializes, like you have heard, in public health parasitology and epidemiology. I hope now, Nigeria, um, she holds a doctorate degree in parasitology from the University of Nigeria and Soka in 2003. Her other certificates. Now, these other certificates are the ones that trail me most because she's not a Nigerian professor. She's internationally renowned. All that I'm going to read now, just listen to me carefully. International, international. Like I want to be like you when I grow up. So her other certificates include social innovation summer training certificate. That was in August 2022. Um, tropical disease research global certificate from Amwa Hansen Research Institute and social and entrepreneurship to spur health. That was in 2022. Then the Geneva Learning Foundation in collaboration with WHO certificate of acceleration to impact for female, sorry, for female genital chistosomiasis in October 2021. Another Geneva Learning Foundation in collaboration with the World Health Organization certificate on scholar level one workshop for improved prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of female Denita Chistosmias. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. May 2021. The African region, the fifth one African Regional Training Center, in collaboration with advocate on the gender-based analysis for vector-borne diseases and climate change research. That was also in March 2021. Another WHO um trap disease research sponsored by United Nations University and Monash University Malaysia 
the certificate on implementation research with focus on infectious diseases of poverty. Wow. So uh, poverty has disease. In fact, that is a kind of disease that I want to hear about. That was also in March, in February 2020. Uh, sorry, February 2018, I'm right. Then number seven, tropical disease research. Another one, WHO ethics and research codes for applied social science for public health, collaboration with special program for research and training in tropical disease research of the WHO and with the support of Federal Ministry of Health, Abuja, Nigeria, in 2008. That tells you the person I'm reading about is one big EJ in academics. And I'm so happy I'm nominated to take among this afternoon. I guess it's not easy, you know. Number nine, basic molecular biology techniques for DNA technology, Biotechnology Center, University of Agriculture, Abiyokuta, in October 2006. She has served and is still serving her faculty and the university at large in many capacities. Some of such positions, among others, include one, head of department parastology and entomology from 2012 to 2014, Two, professor and member of bioscience faculty, 2014 to date. Three, departmental examination officer, 2008 to 2010, 2011 to 2012, Namdas Kiwe University. Okay. Number four, faculty of bioscience representative in Senate from 2011 to 2014. And then a very important one, if you look around, you see people with such, I'm supposed to wear my own up here. And I wouldn't know what some of you would think about it. I decided, please raise my own up. That is Organization for Women in Science. She's an S official member who uh, up till now she's still participating. And that's why we say we are coming here, not just with academic gown, we are also coming with our search. So after this, we are going to snap picture with our search, right? So, um, at present, she is, no, I've not finished that. The number six one is postgraduate sub dean for the Faculty of Bioscience from 2014 to 2019. The member social uh, school of postgraduate scholarship scheme, 2016 to date. Member university scholarship award committee, 2021 to date. At present, she is the Associate Provost Sciences of College of Postgraduate Studies. Aha, members of postgraduate people are here. Please clap them more. It's not easy. Okay. And uh, she's a member of Social Innovation in Health Initiative, Nandas Diwe University Research Team with WHO Grant Award. You soon put me in WHO. Now her first, she's the first female inaugural lecturer from the Department of Parastology and Entomology. They are here. And the second inaugural lecturer from the same department. Number two, a big one. She's the first female PhD holder and professor born of the large Emejulu family of Nkolofia, right? Nkolofia village in our case. Number three, she's the first associate provost sciences of the College of Postgraduate Studies. Ah, she, you should have also added that you are the first female associate provost because anyone that comes now, you are the first. He's not here, so it needs to be mentioned. Eh? No, the provost is here, the associate provost. She is the number one female associate provost, but the first female provost is also here. Thank you. Um, number four, 
um, Professor Chin Elekunife is a fellow of the Parastology and Public Health Society of Nigeria. Wonderful. A very strong member, immediate past secretary, and currently the National Treasurer of Parastology and Public Health Society of in fact, a big clap. She's also a member of International Society for Infectious Diseases, among others. She has successfully supervised over 30 MSCs, five PhD students, and has over 50 publications in international peer-reviewed scientific journals. I hope you heard that. Says international, not local journals. Then some of her travel grant awards. Number one, participation in special program and training in tropical disease research of the World Health Organization and with the support of the Federal Ministry of Health, Abuja, Nigeria, on ethics and sustaining research codes for applied social sciences and public health. That was in April 2008. Two, Joint Action Forum, JF, participation on World, uh, World Health Organization stroke Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, their eighth biennial meeting of the Global Alliance to Eliminate Lymphatic Filariasis, and first global meeting of the STH, only God knows what that means, okay. Anyway, you heard her. I won't go back to that. <laughs> With the Global Chistosomiasis Alliance in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, December 8th to 12th, 2014. Number three, Cyst Neglected Tropical Diseases Network, Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates, Sheraton, Sheraton, sorry. That was a grant to travel there. Then the tenth neglected tropical disease network that was in on 17 to 19 September 2019 at the Arendt and Convention Center, Liverpool, UK. That was travel grant also. She has served and is still serving as external examiner to many universities as well as external assessor of lecturers outputs. Uh, slash publications for promotion to the position of readers and professors. Such universities include Imo State University, Chukwe Meko Odimego Jupu University, Madonna University, Cross Rivers University of Technology, Calaba, Taraba State University, Jalingo, University of Port Harcourt, uh, Evangel University, uh, Abakaliki, Ebony State University, and Babcock University. As a reviewer, Professor Chinyel Angela Ipunife serves as chief editor, college editorial board, one of four is the College of Education, Subi, Anambra State. And she was doing that from 2018 till date. She has reviewed some third fund sponsored books, such as Introductory Ecology, Chukwu Emeka Odimego Chukwu University, that's where that book originated from. Then Adam, um, sorry, please. Um, so many things here. So let me just mention a few more of the, of the journals she has been editor. She served as a reviewer to many national and international journals such as El Severe Parasite and Epidemiology Journal and Nigerian Journal of Parastology, among others. You see, I skipped some because of time. Our research interests, interest areas are urogenital chistosomiasis, comma, malaria. Don't mind that, my comma, because I just decided to mention it. Oncosecchiasis and then geohermitis. She participated in the monitoring of community directed treatments with ivermectin in Anambra State. That was 2009. Tinyala was the coordinator for this program in Anambra State. Uh, 
Another one is rap lua. I don't know. Say lua lua. Survey in Southeast Nigeria, supported by the Qatar Center in April 2015. She was a facilitator during the development of minimum service package and regulations for primary health care delivery in three states. That's Imo State, Anambra State, and Abia State. And that was in 2017, funded by UNICEF. In essence, she's a consultant to CATA Center and UNICEF. She was also a team leader during the lymphatic filariasis transmission assessment survey funded by WHO and supported by Federal Ministry of Health. Didn't I say I'm talking about an international professor, E. Jalen, in the academic field? Maybe now I'm waiting for something else like also, is that? Okay, let me go on. Chinyel is also the research and planning officer, as well as a member of the technical, the, uh, technical advisory committee of Pan-African Community Initiative on Education and Health. And NGDO that supports global efforts to reduce the burden of soil transmitted helming infections in school children who are at the risk of infection and have limited access to safe and effective treatment. And when I, I received this, somehow I had additional one that just came in this week. You know, sometimes you have a lot of former, 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 former. And I'm talking of a professor that is a and also a current. So why we have ended this, another one came in that she has been selected in this May 2023 as ICOD mentorship, uh, as a mentor in the ICOD mentorship program. And the person she's to mentor is called Charity Hungu of Kenya. And by the way, ICOD mentorship program means improving community health outcomes through research, dialogue, and system strengthening. That is mentorship for early career researchers and scientists in the field of neglected tropical diseases. The Vice Chancellor, sir, professors here present, uh, Emerita, uh, I'm so happy because she wanted Professor Amazigo to be here, and she's here also. So, to the university community, I present to you a wonderful, internationally renowned professor, Chinya Ekulife. Thank you very much. Professor Benebe, thank you <laughs> for that citation. This is a <laughs> distinguished guest because of time factor and may not go on to recognize everybody. So permit me to go on with the business of the day. Good afternoon, all. I welcome you to my inaugural lecture, which marks a significant milestone in my career as an academic. It's an occasion that provides me with a unique opportunity to give the testimony of my life and what I did as a professor of public health parasitology. Thank you, everyone, for placing this occasion. Now, my history. I was born at Onicha. I attended primaries one to four at Nsoka. Completed primaries five and six at Onicha when my family relocated to Onicha. It may interest you that I also attended the prestigious Queen of the Rosary College, Onicha, QRC. Where I excelled in the sciences. 
I still remember my chemistry teacher, Mrs. Wangwa, who will always pour us and motivate us by always posting every chemistry test on the laboratory uh, board, notice board. And whenever such postings were made, most students will shy away from that board. But for those of us with good appetites for sciences, uh, it was another show of time. So we'll go there to see what must, must have been posted. So as a result of my excellent performances in the sciences, people thought that I was studying medicine and surgery in the university. Unfortunately, my jam score was not up to the cutoff point. So I found myself in the zoology department of the University of Nigeria and Soka. But with the understanding that I would switch over to medicine and surgery in my second year. So I passed my one courses. Professor Uchamaziko here was made my staff advisor. But when it was time to change to medicine, the medical school unit accepted me, but my department reneged and refused to release me. <laughs> So, in the words of my then HOD, late Professor I. Obala, I cannot afford to lose one of our best students. I was so demoralized that I stopped attending lectures in my second year as a zoology student. And even when I attended, I only used loose full scrap sheets instead of my lecture notes. <laughs> However, my mother, late Rosaline Emedulu, May God rest her soul, called me to order, which culminated in my graduating with a very good result, second best in my class. So after graduation, I still lost the ambition to study medicine. <laughs> and so I applied through direct entry to University of Jobs with an introductory letter to Professor, late Professor Onwuleri, who was a staff then of the University of Jobs. He quickly threw his weights into the project to ensure that I was admitted. He assured me that the issue was foreclosed in the light of the quality of my transcript. To reassure me, he even made known to me my serial number in the shortlisted merit list awaiting JAMS approval. When the JAMS finally released the list, I saw on the notice board again that my name was cancelled with pen and replaced with another name. The shock Professor C. O. Omuliri had seeing the cancellation was palpable. He spent time consoling me as I worked on control level. Meanwhile, he she reassured me that life does not start and end with medical profession. My mother, may her beautiful soul rest in peace, again intervened and advised as usual that I should go back to school and do my higher degree. So my best essential of staff, distinguished guests. After my master's in zoology department of uh, University of Nigeria and Soka, I joined Federal College of Education Technical Umu as a pioneer staff in 1990, when Dr. Titus Eze, now late professor Titus Eze, was the pioneer provost. There was no department of biology, so I was attached to the school of um, home economics, agri and home economics, where I, I taught uh, introductory biology. So I still recall when the college hosted its first conference with participants from other colleges of education. My colleagues prepared papers for presentation in their areas of study in relation to technical technology education. And I did not want to see myself missing in action. So I prepared a paper on parasitology and technical education. In the paper, I listed all the parasites I could remember, such as Trancunculus medinensis, Chisosoma hematobium, Oncoseca volvolus, Tricuris tricuria, uh, Enterobius and and uh, plasmodium ovalo, and so on. 
and I went on to highlight the work of a parasologist and link the whole story to technological development. After my presentation, there was a pin drop silence <laughs> as nobody was in tune with my presentation. <laughs> the then provost of Federal College of Education, Asaba, Dr. Olimpo, who was busy harassing all presenters with questions and corrections because most of us, we are young lecturers and that was the first time we are being exposed to conference and paper presentation. The man also kept moot. So my then provost laughed and inquired from him whether he had no comments. <laughs> so Dr. Olimfo stood up and said, um, what is this parasite self? Is it not insects? House flies and flying ants. Everybody laughed. There and then, I knew I had to enroll for my PhD and start for work where I belong. So thereafter, I got married to this charming, handsome young man there. <laughs> so for the sake of being closer to my husband, I transferred to Nwapo Rizu College of Education in Sibu. And at least they, they had biology departments there. But yes, I knew that I am not yet there. So I had my PhD from zoology department, University of Nigeria and Soka, where I specialized in public health parasitology in 2003. It may interest you that I never, uh, that I never saw Professor COE only again until sometime in 2004, when I attended the Conference of Surgery and Public Health Society of Nigeria at Imo State University over in that 2004. So immediately I saw Professor Onwoleri. I woke up to introduce myself. He at once remembered the crying young girl at just some years back. So as a university teacher, he again reassured me that I joined a noble profession. Considering my dual responsibility as a mother and home homekeeper, as well as an academic, he equipped, girl, you are on the right track. I drive on, research, travel, meet people and collaborate. More power to your elbow. So I went back to my seat to be held a fair, charming, cool, and well comported lady who was sitting by my right. We exchanged pleasantries, and she opened her conference bag, brought out a book, wrote on the first page with compliments, signed it, and gave it to me. The book was the 22nd inaugural lecture of the University of Calabar, titled Parasites. Poverty and Politics, delivered by Professor Ekanem Ii Bridge, the acting vice chancellor of Cross University of uh, State University of uh, Calabar. Hmm. As I was basking in the euphoria of having a VC as a friend, I also realized that the man sitting by my left was the deputy vice chancellor, Delta State University, Abraka. Professor Martin Owe. That was when I realized the import of Professor Ongoleri's words. I then told myself, Ne, you have arrived though. Parastology, here I come. I then realized that I had to move to the university to make my own impact. So I joined Namda Zikiwa University as lecturer one in 2005 and rose to the rank of a professor in 2014. Here I am today to expose what I have done as a public health parasitologist, who is on the right track, driving on in Professor Onwiliri's work, researching, teaching and mentoring others, traveling and collaborating with more power still on my elbows. I humbly request that you sit back listen and follow me 
as I take you through the rough road of the neglected tropical diseases, the urogenital worm, which I profess. Neglected tropical diseases, known as NTDs, are a group of diseases that cause substantial illness for more than 1 million people globally. Neglected tropical diseases affect the world's poorest people, impair physical and cognitive development, and limit productivity. They also contribute to mother and child illness and death. NTDs are found in several countries like Africa, Asia, and Latin America. They are common in tropical areas where people do not have access to clean water or safe ways to dispose human waste. Why neglected? They are called neglected because they generally afflict the world's poor and historically, have not received as much attention as other diseases. So it is worthy to note that the diseases were declared NTD in 2012 by the World Health Organization. The causative agents include the viruses, bacteria, protozoa, fungi, and other parasitic worms. Examples are thoroughly also Chagas disease, chikungunya, francunculiasis, echinococcus, chistosomiasis, strepanosomiasis, oncosechiasis, among others. The epidemiology of NTDs is complex and often related to environmental conditions. Many of them are vector borne. Some have animal reservoir and are associated with complex life cycles. So all these factors make their public health control challenging. Since after the London Declaration in 2012, a tremendous interest in NTC arose among stakeholders and NTD Day was created. So what NTD Day? is an awareness day for addressing neglected tropical diseases. On January 13, 2020, the global community came together for the first, first time to recognize World NTD Day. Subsequently, on 30th May, 2021, the World Health Assembly recognized 30th January as World Neglected Tropical Disease Day through the decision World Health Assembly 718. This decision formalized 30th January as a day to create better awareness and on the devastating impact of NTDs on the poorest populations around the world. The following are the years and themes of the yearly celebration. 2020, it NTD for good, for all, 2021, ending the neglect of neglected tropical diseases. 2022, using media outreach for NTD awareness. 2023, act now, act together, together invest in neglected tropical diseases. We also have five most prevalent neglected tropical diseases. They are, Lymphatic filariasis, which causes elephantiasis, trachoma, the eye disease, oncosechiasis, also known as river blindness, chistosomiasis, which we are going to discuss today, soil transmitted hermintiasis, the hookworms, the roundworms, and the uh, whipworms. We have some key facts from WHO on chistosomiasis. 
remember, as I said, our discussion today is on chistosomiasis, and that is where the urogenital worm lies. So this key fact from WHO was published on February 2023. One is that chistosomiasis is an acute and chronic disease caused by parasitic worms. Two is that people are infected during routine agricultural, domestic, occupational, and recreational activities, which ex expose them to infested water. The third one is that lack of hygiene and certain display habits of school children, such as swimming or fishing in infested water, make them especially vulnerable to infection. The life cycle model for chistosomiasis was produced by Epunipe in 2003. So you can see man, water, and then the snail hose. There are two forms of chistosomiasis, the intestinal chistosomiasis and the urogenital chistosomiasis. So that's urogenital worm under urogenital chistosomiasis. That is the one there. The scientific name is Chistosoma hematobium. The male worm is the big one. You can see the tiny worm being carried by the male worm in a canal called Kinocophoric Canal. And this worm resides in the vein of human being. The life cycle again, also developed by April 2003. At the apex, you see the worm, the male worm carrying the female worm. The egg, which when woman being passes urine, once it touches water, it will hatch. The egg has terminal spine. Once the egg hatches, it will turn into what is called miracidium. The miracidium will now infect water snails. Not all water snails. We have this species called Bulinus. Under this Bulinus, we have other species. We have Bulinus globosus, Bulinus truncatus, Bulinus foscali, and Bulinus africanus. In this snail, this one will now differentiate and mature. And from this snail, the secaria will be released. So when human being goes back into the water body, the secaria will now penetrate the body and then the cycle continues. The symptoms, one is hematuria, that is blood in urine. When infected person passes for urine, it will be red, just like blood. Fibrosis of the bladder and ureter, kidney damage, sometimes in advanced cases, bladder cancer, complications in later stages. In women, genital lesions, vaginal bleeding, pain during sexual intercourse, and nodules in the vulva. In men, pathology of the seminal vesicles, prostrate, and other organs, and other long-term irreversible consequences, including infertility. Other facts that we are supposed to know the thing about a uh, urogenital histotomiasis. One is that worldwide, Nigeria has the highest prevalence of urinary histotomiasis or urogenital histotomiasis with about 29 million cases and about 101 million people at risk. That was a report in 2010. Earlier studies on urogenital histotomiasis focus extensively on the urinary form of the disease, commonly called urinary chistosomiasis, with little attention to the genital form of the disease. But the World Health Organization in the year 2009 renamed urinary chistosomiasis as urogenital chistosomiasis to cater for the genital involvement of infection and estimated that about 45 million women of reproductive age suffer from urogenital chistosomiasis. Now that the name of the disease has been broadened to include the genital form of the disease, it is necessary for both the health professionals and the endemic population to become aware of 
of the broadened scope of signs and symptoms to help with diagnosis and management of the infection. Now, my research is that thing that made me a professor. My contributions and the war so far. Most of my works were done along and in Agolo Lake and the associated community. That's the picture of the lake with raffia palm lining the bank of the lake. So my first study was in December 1991, where I surveyed the snail intermediate host, the gastropod corner of Agolo Lake. Here, gastropod means the snail intermediate host. So hand picking and other method of collection was used. Seven species were collected. Limnia natalensis, Bolinus globosus, Bolinus truncatus, Bion filaria peperi, Pilawene, and Melanoides tuberculata. My contribution here was that the intermediate host, Bolinus truncatus, for Chisotoma hematosis in the area was confirmed. The shedding of a disicaria indicates a possible role of Bolinus globus in the transmission of animal trematodes. The occurrence of even limna natal and natalensis indicated that probably we may also have Pashola gigantica in that area. So that awareness and surveillance was created. Then my name uh, was answering a major do then. So I published the work in 1990. My second work was also on epidemiology in Agola and surrounding area. So the infection was found to be endemic in the area, published in 1994. The presence of the disease in Agola and surrounding communities was also confirmed. The prevalence rates was recorded in three communities, Agolo, Umri, and others in Nu. The significance of both species transmitting in the same habitat is obvious, judging from similar findings in Volta Lake of Ghana by Chu et al. Wright earlier pointed to the fact that both snail species transmit different strains of the parasite. It therefore means that mixing of the strains may be occurring in the area. So as a result, study on mobility pattern was suggested and infection rates in the snails was partitioned in such a way that Bolinus truncatus transmission predominates at the Agolo side, while Bolinus globus transmission predominates at the side of the lake. My third study was on distribution of this disease in the whole of Agolo. So urine screening was done among seven schools. And chistosomiasis prevalence was highest in Umowole Primary School. Males had higher infection rates than females. And the age group 10 to 14 years recorded the highest level of infection. My contribution here, they identified seven schools with infected children and the 10 to 14 years old age group with high infection rates revealed the target group for mass drug administration. You know, the knowledge of the pattern of exposure to infection is essential to an understanding of epidemiology of histosoma hematobin infection. So human contact with water arises from four basic needs, occupational, recreational, domestic, and sociocultural. So for six months, October 2020 to 2000, March 2021, human activities in, the, uh, in Agolo Lake were observed and recorded. The ages of the peoples were also recorded and observations were was made on daily basis. This was done every evening between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. except on Sundays. And on Saturdays, the human activities were also observed from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. This period uh, the period we had a uh, high human activity. These are the water contact activities observed during my 
uh, study period. You can see domestic people washing, fetching water. You can see children swimming in the lake, some fishing in the lake. That's the second arm of the lake where people have been built the big bridge. So my contribution here is that the highest number of people were engaged in swimming, while the lowest were found fishing. And the majority of contacts was recreational and domestic, but children had more contacts than adults. So this study has shown that reduction in egg output, which researchers like Wilkins attributed to immunity, was closely related to a lower level of contact, water contact for older people, thus providing a simpler explanation than that of intrinsic immunity. So by water contact observation, it has been possible to identify which human activity that carried the greatest risk. So the elimination or reduction in intensity of these particular activities by control measures may provide the best means of reducing the output of eggs in human urine and hence the warm burden of the population published in 2004. Knowledge, attitude and practices study in the three endemic communities, Agolo, Mri, and others in Nu. Questionnaire was the main instrument used for this study and 300 respondents were involved. All respondents associated the disease with passing of blood in urine so the symptoms are well known. They even have uh, Igbo names for the uh, symptoms, like Oyo Obala, Mbu Obala, Maimiri Obala, and so on. But however, most did not associate the disease with swimming in infected water, but they associated it with eating water snail. A few linked it to God's swish. The presence of the disease was also linked with the Nigeria Biafra Civil War of 1967 to 1970, published in 2004. Contribution there. The result revealed a general ignorance of the causation and mode of transmission of the disease in the area. The study also revealed that the disease was introduced in the area during the Nigeria Biafra Civil War when soldiers and refugees from endemic areas contaminated the Agolo Lake. So studies of individuals with special exposure characteristics, such as migrants who left an endemic area abound. So those of us that have something to do with migration studies will be interested in this. My sixth research was on the effect of season and distance on the prevalence and intensity rate of the disease. School pupils were also used because they represent the age groups of greatest risk and with greatest intensity of infection. They always provide convenient baseline data for the whole population. So distance from the center of the village to the lake, the lake was estimated. Geometric mean egg count per 10 mil, a 10 mil urine decreased from 22.5 eggs per 10 mil urine in dry season to 10.7 in wet season. Prevalence and intensity also show significant decrease, which increased in the distance from the lake, from the village to the lake, published in 2005. The seasonal decrease on geometric mean egg output of individuals is very important in the context of control measures for the disease. Since they do not visit the lake during the rainy season, mass drug treatment, most uh, treatment of the villagers around the schools identified with testosterone and hematodin during the rainy season will be beneficial in curtailing incidence of testosterone. Such an approach will have the effect of reducing the parasite load as well as chances of reinfection, reinfecting the snails and the water during the dry season. The study also revealed that the prevalence rate and intensity showed significant decrease with increase in distance from village to the lake. The seventh study was the rapid assessment method using questionnaire. Studies in Tanzania on community diagnosis 
of urogenital cheese systems have demonstrated that self-administered questionnaire could be distributed in a cost-effective manner through an existing and administrative system, and that their diagnostic performance for identifying high risk from here, the word there is high risk communities, was very good. We therefore tested this approach in Angola. The results revealed that the questionnaire as a diagnostic tool was highly specific the questionnaire administration was also shown to be cheaper with a cost seven times less than urine microscopy, as well as uh, time saving, published in 2005 with Professor Calpo. So the diagnostic performance of the questionnaire was good in view of its preliminary screening function. Moreover, in today's developing countries context, in which field research is conducted, there is often a lack of adequate facilities and personnel. So scientific rigor also requires that often studies take too long to meet the immediate needs of disease control program. So this method solves the need for more rapid method of assessing high risk situations of, or diagnosing health urgent problems. Biology and population parameters of soil trans uh, uh, intermediate host. The intermediate host here is the snail intermediate host. So the biology and population parameters were studied. We remember two snails were uh, two types of blindness were uh, isolated from the lake. So these nails are Bulinus rancatus and Bulinus globosus. So they were read in the lab, and it was discovered that the net reproductive rate, generation time, and capacity rate of increase were similar. So since both species adapted well, they have similar population parameters. Controlling both snails will not be difficult. You use the same control method to control both snails. Number nine is the Miracidia infectivity rate of snails. The snails were also maintained in the lab and the deposited eggs were allowed to hatch. Dates notate on the snails of different ages were introduced. Then Miracidia was uh, introduced into the water body where we had the snails in the lab. So we found that penetration was uh, found to be independent of age of the snail. This was an interesting discovery. Considering the usual methods for collecting mollusks, mollusks here means snails again, that we tend to overlook those under two millimeter in shell diameter because of the belief that they are too young to support patent in infection. So discarding younger snails during field collection should be discouraged. It was also necessary then to investigate the particular age when snails can support patent infection for further understanding of epidemiology and the control of the disease, published in 2008. We took the war to Delta State, where we carried out a cross-sectional study on urogenital cystosomiasis in Indoka East local government area. We embarked on this war after my um, lecture with final year students of my department in 2009. After the lecture on urogenital cystosomiasis, a student walked up to me and said, Ma, my mother who works in the hospital discovered that one boy passed, that was passing blood in urine came to the hospital. And I told her, get ready, we will go there to find out what is happening. To find out if what, what, what happened there was uh, urogenital cystosomiasis or something else. So when we went there, we collected urine samples, even from not only schools now, even from households. We were able to collect about 760 urine samples. 
and behold, 214 of them had uh, uh, urogenital cystosomias. And the community with highest infection rate was uh, Yadea Amme, and the prevalence peaked in five to nine years age group, followed by that same 10 to 14 years. And that school children and farmers showed the greatest risk of infection. So our contribution here that this study established the endemicity of urinary cystosomia in some communities in Ndokwa East local government. It was then advocated that early intervention measures such as health education campaigns and provision of essential amenities like water and potholes be instituted in the community, published in 2009. This, I call this one almighty study, almighty ultrasound study. We carried out morbidity study using ultrasound machine. This was the era when the change from transmission control so morbidity control was initiated by the development of safer and more effective drugs and simple diagnostic techniques. This requires knowledge of what changes occurred in various organs, how fast and how far they can be reversed by treatment and how soon they appear after reinfection. So 60 infected primary school children who passed 50 uh, more than 50 eggs per 10 mil urine was assessed. And the ultrasonographic examination was done using a sector scanner with convex probe. Uh, this study, we also used the World Health Organization method of classification. It may interest you that I was the first person to use the World Health uh, recognized uh, uh, classification method of scoring. So uh, a similar study was done in Nepal before me, but the person did not use the World Health recognized classification scoring method. So these are the pathological effects seen during this study. There was irregularity of the bladder wall that gave us 25%, thickening of the bladder wall 10%, Massing of the bladder wall, 3.3%. We did not see a pseudopolyp. And we had male uh, pupils that had more lesion than females. That's the table representing whatever. So there was also ultrasound check after treatment because the children, they were treated. So an ultrasound check on the children was repeated after three and and six months of treatment of lesion reversibility. So all bladder and kidney lesions responded favorable to treatment with praziquantil. Praziquantil is a drug of choice. 40 mg per kilometer body weight, per kg body weight. Contribution, health education. I embarked on health education campaign after this study, which included showing the community members evidence of damages to the, their organs using the picture produced uh, from the ultrasound study. This definitely went a long way in the control and prevention of the disease in the community. You can today hardly find a child in Agolo today infected with urogenital cystosomiasis. Thus, ultrasound can make a valuable contribution to the monitoring of control programs and data collected. <laughs> should enable informed decision to be made about where resources can best be invested, published in 2002. So the war was again taken to Imo State because of the presence of a well-known water body known as Oguta Lake. The study aimed at identifying the snail fauna of Oguta Lake in Oguta 1 between May 2012 and January 2013. So four study sites we are surveyed using standard scoop methods. About 385 snails were collected. We have limnia. We have limnia, bolinus, and pillar. 
and the special distribution of snails was clustered within two sites, the Obaocha and Ono Obaocha, out of the four surveyed sites. And more snails were collected in the rainy season than in the dry season. The contribution here was that there was establishment of continuous presence of snail host species in Okuta lakes, irrespective of dredging activities in the lake. The presence of snail host species indicates likely presence of urogenital physiosomiasis among people living in the community. Although none of the snails collected and exposed to sunlight was found to shed sectarium. My first book in the area, this is an interesting story. It was published in 2003 by Class Nigerian Limited, 100 page book. The book X-ray all the available diagnostic and study techniques involving the human host, which is the definitive host, the intermediate host, the snail, and the water body during the period. The book was written in the course of gathering information from the medical library, UNEC, Teaching Hospital, Enugu, for my PhD seminar, presentation in the Department of Zoology. My supervisor and mentor, late Professor Fab Okafo, made me to gather lots of information on schistosomias. At a point, I started to wonder if all these materials and reviews I had were just for a seminar course. Some members of staff and visitors in the library began to think that I was a member of staff in the library and because I was always seen in that library. Then the surprise. My supervisor kept, and kept on rearranging and adding new ideas to the table of contents. Whenever he did such rearrangements, he would smile, hold the right up as a baby, and encourage me to go and update, implying that I still had a long way to go. So on a certain day, after he had gone through the huge write-up, he said, my sister extracts pages this and that for your seminar. You have written a book in this interest area titled Diagnostic and Study Techniques in Histosomiasis. I will write the forward by tomorrow. Congratulations. So the said book was extensively used by both undergraduates and postgraduate students of zoology department, University of Nigeria and Soka, then and later by some parasology and entomology students of UNISIC that worked in the area. Now my fulfillment, this is another interesting story. This was ushered in by a call from UK in 2009 by my mentee named Obiora Nanya. In his words, Auntie, you have gone foul. I came across a book that was just released written by Alan Agler with Moje Higler and forward by Bill Gates and published by John Hopkins University Press, Baltimore. And I asked, what about the book? He said that my name was mentioned several times in the book and it was about my contribution towards histosomiasis control in Nigeria. So, I requested for a copy of the book, which he sent. I was thrilled because it was about my research at Agudu Lake and how I touched and impacted primary school children in that community. If not for good mentorship, my mentee would not have called and I may not have known about the book. Ah, something is missing. So, Okay, so the chapter six, page 90 of the book, captioned or the title, A New Normal, started with, that chapter six, started with Dr. Chinyalo Epunife, professor of parasology at Nnamdazikowe University, who has studied and fought schistosomiasis in Nigeria for more than a decade, and so, so on so many things in that chapter. Even the last chapter, page 102, concluded with, but 
in parts of Nigeria, thanks to the work of Dr. Ekunife and others, schistosomiasis is no longer the normal part of life it once was. So interestingly, in that same September, that same night, 2019, I won the NNN travel grants. And so traveled to Liverpool for the Neglected Tropical Disease Network Conference. And I was excited to see the book on display. Then that was when they published the book. So I did not waste time to purchase three copies at $200 each for my mentors, Professor Fabian Okafo of Blessed Memory and Professor Uche Amazigo, FAS. The dead copy went to my vice chancellor, Professor C.O. Esimone, to showcase my contribution in placing Nam Yatsikiwe on the global map. And in the spirit of Project 200, that's the book then, named Under the Big Three, Extraordinary Stories from the Movement to End Neglected Tropical Disease. You can see forward by Bill Gates. So I was so excited. Even the best day I got the book, I slept with the book. So that's the publisher there, the Alan Egla. She is the CEO of the End Fund. So these escapades with the Eurogenital one was adventurous, daring, exciting, knowledge contributory, health impactful, and has led to a somewhat fulfilled and exciting destination, this inaugural lecture. <laughs> other researches, as a public health parasologist, I was I also engaged in other researches like COVID-19, malaria, HIV, SDH, oncosechiasis, protozoan parasite, bacteria, and so on. My future, uh, future research direction and focus. I have been actively involved in trainings and have not stopped to improve and update my knowledge in current trends and issues in my area of specialization. I recently got involved in an online study on female genital schistosomiasis. Not minding that the majority of the participants were young scientists. From the study, I developed a manual titled Female Genital Schistosomiasis, a training manual for postgraduate students and researchers. It may also interest you that the Female Genital Chisosomiasis Society of Nigeria was inaugurated last year, 30th March, 2023 at Abuja. And that presently, I am the Anambra State Coordinator of the society. The truth is that I need a laboratory facility. This is that I need a laboratory, personal laboratory facility for conducting trainings in this area and other areas like malaria. My mentees are eagerly waiting for this, for this development, as they want to take part in mentoring the upcoming ones. The zeal is there. The fire is still burning in earnest. Young dedicated researchers who are interested in this area are welcome. I invite you, come and join me in this war as we look forward to putting smiles on the faces of the poor who are afflicted with urogenital schistosomiasis and other neglected tropical diseases. Conclusion and recommendation. Water is the source of infection of most parasitic diseases. If they don't get you when you drink it, they get you by penetrating your skin or through inoculation by insect vectors and breathe, that breathe on the water. Remember during this lecture, that I mentioned two factors, pollution of natural bodies of water with human waste, and even human going back to contact themselves in these body, uh, water bodies. So the relationship between water and sanitation is quite significant. There can be no good sanitation without an adequate water supply. Poor sanitation results in the pollution of water with human waste containing infective agents or the creation of stable breeding grounds for vectors and intermediate hosts of the parasites. 
the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, says access to portable water by the masses is a human right, which must be respected by all tiers of government. No wonder our mama parasitology, Professor Eka Bridge, the lady that gave me the 22nd inaugural lecture. During her discussion or interview with her, uh, I know she should be work, uh, watching online and listening online. She joined uh, she eventually. So in her interview with Premium Times Nigeria on June 2020, she said, I wish the political leaders would just one day say that all their political appointees to provide their communities with portable water. That will solve a huge percentage of the health problem because so many are water related. As far as urogenital schistosomiasis and other waterborne diseases are concerned, the most effective method of control, I believe, is already known and has been known from time immemorial. It is simply the provision of safe, portable water supply. If only the political will is there, prevention is better than kill, though may not be cheaper. That book. I appreciate all of you for listening. Acknowledgement. First of all, I think I should look up to my God who has never failed me. I will never cease to appreciate you. So before I proceed, permit me to share with you a quote by Helen Keller, an American author and political activist and the first deaf blind person to earn a Bachelor of Arts degree. She rightly posits, posited that so long as the memory of certain beloved friends lives in my heart, I shall say that life is good. That I must say about my late parents, Nicholas and Rosaline Emejulu, Jenix Bread. Again, she was quoted to have said that the best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. Memories and legacies of my parents are forever in my heart. They molded, directed, and showed me the best ways to navigate. And for this, I am grateful to God. I wish to appreciate the Vice Chancellor of our great university, Professor Charles Esimone, man of vision, endowed with listening ears, who carries all along and cares for the progress of the staff. I salute you, sir, for making today possible. I'm grateful to my teachers from primary to secondary schools for forming me. I will always remember, remember your contributions towards my development as an adolescent. I wish to appreciate my mentors and supervisors. Professor Fabian Ukan for late, and Professor Uja Mazigo seated behind the Vice Chancellor. <laughs> Professor Ukafa of Zoology Department, we lost him in 2021. I wish he were here today to listen to me. This is a supervisor that led his supervisees to the field and laboratory works, teaching and guiding until the art is mastered. So, so these are my mentors, and to Professor Ucha Amazigo, my cheerleader, mm -hmm. who has always pushed and tried to bring out the best in me. On their shoulders, I stood to rise. I thank you, and will never cease to remember you and yours in my prayers. Thank you, ma. I cannot forget the professors and members of my faculty and departments. Most of them are here. And also my senior, as well as my retired colleagues. Some of them are here too. 
some joined virtually, like Professor Wonko, Professor Uche Amazigo again, Professor Amechi Oyeka is there, Professor Rob Eguatu, welcome, sir. Professor ANC Okaka, we, I think she joined uh, virtually too. They, for their contribution, they contributed in various ways in the course of my work life. To let Dr. Abiodun Uzumba, the part you played in my academic growth is indelible. May your soul and that of Professor J.I. Mbanugo find rest in the Lord. My appreciation goes to my students at all levels, undergraduates and postgraduates, my MSc and, and PhD products, some of them are here too, to my hardworking, focused mentees, I appreciate you all. My interactions with you and some of our various outputs made me a professor. Truly, you are part of my joy. I'm grateful to my schoolmates, especially the queen of the Rosary College, Onita. The old girls and my classmates. Who have maintained contact and who believed that we must be each other's keeper. We have all maintained our maiden names during interaction. You can see them there. I got my rapok, your Arusi Gane Bozo Gagova, your Arusi Gadendo. Yes, they brought the cake here. And the, the, the ones present are. I can see Anthony on one Emily. I know all of them by name. Lois and Abu, Edi Tike, Buna, Ngozi Akwana, Ngozi Okonkwa, Chi Mwoke Rulu, Helen and Nicole, Ngozi Emo, and our every challenge. Ngozi War, her name is Ngozi Aga, so we call her War, that period. <laughs> you are all welcome. And some of them in the United States. Uh, one here, we are me, Ngozi Mwenze and um, Magdalene Anyapolo. The memo part, keep well produced memo part, we are going to share, uh, share today, was sponsored by my classmates in the United States. So I hail you all and thank you. So my friends and colleagues, Professor Angelo Utele, Engineer Ankem Antine Loigwe, Professor Pat Esemono, Professor Ebenebe, that keep the citation, Ike and Dr. Kusi Odinebu, if you are able, Mabane, Professor Ike and Dr. Kito Ekwalo, Professor Shimo Okolo, Professor JC and Dr. Ipi Okonkwo, Professor Chris Anyamen, Professor Ngozi Anyikwa, Professor Kate Omenoga, Professor Ngozi Ago, Mr. and Mrs. Petran Chima, Dr. Emma Emuka, and so on. I humbly appreciate you for your various will you contributed in my life. I cannot forget to recognize and appreciate the College of Postgraduate Family. You can see the family here on their outfit for their good working relationship and for the exposure of working around the clock with passion, fulfillment, and bearing no grudges. The provost, Professor P.K. Chidekwe. Thank you very much. The associate provost, Professor Ovidema. Associate provost, uh, health science, Professor Afonde. You are welcome and thank you for doing this. As well as the indefatigable secretary of the college, Dr. E.P. Anolue. <laughs> I enjoy working with this uh, team. The heads of units are here. Too. Head finance is there. Head audit. My namesake, Angela. Welcome. Other heads of units and all staff of the postgraduate college are not left out. Thank you for good work attitude and friendly nature. Thank you very much. I enjoy working with you. So my society, Parasology and Public Health Society of Nigerian Family, I salute the members here present. 
we have the BOTs that also contributed to my growth. We have other members, the neck, some of them are here, and are present who called that uh, zonal coordinator southeast, Professor Imperial. Yes. My society. So I welcome all PPSN members. I appreciate you all, even my chapter chairman. Thank you. I appreciate you all. I now I wish to appreciate the, the president of my other society, the female genital cystosomiasis of Nigeria, Dr. Ibrahim Rabiu, who joined online. And other members here present for sharing in my joy, in my dream, and for contributing to the fight against urogenital cystosomiasis. I have enjoyed the good work of the CEO, Pan-African Community Initiative of Edu on Education and Health, Professor Uche Amazigo. I will not speak to mention her name. She was a former WHO director. Pashe, that's Pan-African Community Initiative on Education and Health, is an NGO that supports global efforts to reduce the burden of soil transmitted helmet infection in school children. I have continued to serve as a research and planning officer, as well as a member of the technical advisory committee of PASHI, and have gathered a lot of experience working under the CEO, Professor Uche Amazigo. PASHI's involvement in the transformation of the education sector in Anambra State since 2012 to date can never be over enterprise. I will not forget my brother-in-law, I know he, he walked in when the letter was on. Dr. Charles Chukwemeka in Nebu or Geneva Hospital on it. Please, I want them to see you. My first in law, married to my elder sister. He's, he's the owner of Geneva Hospital on it. Who made available his ultrasound machine during the chistotomiasis morbidity study and for his care and fatherly advice. I also appreciate and express my gratitude to PDR WHO, Geneva, for sending the hard copy of the, map, the guide, the particular guide I used during the ultrasonography for the assessment of histosomiasis related morbidity study. I deeply appreciate my siblings for maintaining a close knit relationship after the demise of our parents. We lost both of them in an auto crash. In order of seniority, uh, please, when I call, stand up for recognition. She's over Ilebu. The wife, Dr. Ilebu. Yeah. Behind. Can see you. So she, she is my second mother especially during my early years of marriage. Then, okay, Mejulu, our first son, he came for 10, so, standing there. He is the humble one. I always marvel at, at his goodness. I always marvel at his goodness, making me to count him among those that will make heaven. Yes, he's here with the wife, Lucy. My wife, where are you? That's the wife behind him. Okay, Emejulu, the giver for the Christmas of Nicholas Emejulu's family. <laughs> a helper to those in need. He's not a Nigerian today. Ngozi Obana. My second mother, uh, he's, she's in the United States. She's my confidant and a sister in whom I am well pleased. I also have Tukumu Mejulu. Is he here? My immediate other brother. Chuma, where are you? Yes. Odoguanya may of the house. <laughs> but a brother with a very large heart. Then I have my immediate younger sister, Chika Okonko. Where are you, Chika? You can see her side. <laughs> She's my immediate younger sister. 
who, because of her size, sometimes makes people believe that I am the younger one. Mm -hmm. And lastly, our uh, last lady of the house is not here today. So to my backbone and human shield. I salute you. And I want to let you know that you contributed greatly to what I am today. I remember those times you watch a place visibly on your neck in order to convince Agolo Schools Parents Teachers Association that we were not ritualists. Before we were allowed to take their word, word, word to Guinea Hospital on a for the ultrasound modality study. I will never let you down. I also want to recognize and appreciate my godmother, my mother's younger sister, Reverend Sister Sabina Obale, just here. So back to my immediate family. So the, together with my husband, we have four beautiful children. Beautiful, I mean, if you see them, you know that. My first son, Jeff, is not around here. He's in Lagos. The second son, Bruno, is here with us. Bruno, can you stand up for recognition? Bruno, where are you? See the side and hide. Is he not handsome? Good. Then I have Byron. Far away, he's in Abuja. He was not able to come. So, and our last child, and the only girl, Jennifer, stand up for recognition. Look at her. As my last baby, Jennifer is me. So you all give me joy and have contributed in making the family of which I am the manager, a happy, peaceful, and godly one. So the inaugural lecture committee and to my planning committee who worked hard to make this lecture possible. And to all who have taken time to come to listen and learn about the urogenital one, you are wonderful. Thank you for coming. And God bless everyone here today. Like the moon and the sun, she is worth more than gold. Like the stars in the sky, she is worth more than diamond. She is worth more than silver. Special kind of woman, yeah. Imam Maya, Wabaya. I see Chuku Bunkaya. She's a virtuous woman. I can see when you do call. Oh, yeah. Imam Thank you. Thank you. Please, another round of applause for her. That was wonderful presentation congratulations congratulations
Mr. Chairman, sir, and the Vice Chancellor, Nam the Azikiwe University, okay? Mr. Chairman, sir, and the Vice Chancellor of our great university, the University of All Time, and the University of the Moment, and the University of All Time, the Namda Azikiwe University, okay? Distinguished professors and scholars here present, our guests and participants from all over the world. It is my honor and privilege to respectfully invite the chairman on today's occasion and the vice chancellor of our great institution to come forward for the presentation and decoration of the 83rd inaugural lecturer. Before he stands to come, may I also invite the chairman of Namda Azikiwe University inaugural lecture committee, Professor Richard Wafwe, to come and welcome the VC for the decoration. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Vice Chancellor, we are pleased to inform you that Professor Angela Kinyan Ekunife of the Faculty of Biosciences, Namda Zikwe University, has successfully delivered the eighth top inaugural lecture of Namda Zikwe University. I invite you, Mr. V. Sixer, on behalf of the inaugural lecture committee, before this audience and our virtual audience, to kindly inaugurate her into the register of those who have delivered inaugural lectures and decorate her. Thank you very much. Professor King Angela Equinifer F E P F N on behalf of the Senate of Nanda Zikiwe University and the Vice Chancellor of Nanda Zikiwe University, I decorate you as the 83rd inaugural lecturer of the university in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thank you and congratulations. It takes beautiful picture. Thank you. Congratulations to her, to the beautiful family. And the very handsome. Give me a second, Zene. Uh huh. Give me a second. No more than one. Uh huh. Yeah, that good. Wow, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Congratulations. We'll give you just two minutes to do that, please. Uh huh. Thank you. Oh, 
Okay. We'll take the photographs outside. That is after the program or inside after the program. Yes, after please. After please. So that we can continue. Thank you and congratulations. And uh, without wasting much of our time, we take the cutting of the inaugural lecture cake, beautifully prepared by KRC old, old students based in the United States of America. So we are calling out in a special way the old students that great school you are receiving. Beautiful ladies doing beautiful things and beautiful things. Thank you, please, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. They are all looking fine in all ramifications, honestly. Mm -hmm. I've just been informed that most of them are in academic. So <laughs> they are looking fine. Yeah, may I invite the Vice Chancellor to please join the inaugural cake cutting. And the chairman of the inaugural lecture committee. I think we have to spread out more. We still have some space so that uh, it will accommodate everyone. Yeah. Yes. Because one plus one will continue to be to be one. Be mindful of this the steps. If you just drop back, just back, uh -huh, it is still you are, you are, yes. Good. Yeah. Thank you. I think it's beautiful now. Yes, I think we have to still use that name. She proclaimed when she was coming in with great joy. And that name remains the greatest name on earth and in hell. That is the name Jesus Christ. So we spell Jesus from the beginning, then at the last letter you caught. J E S U S. <laughs> Thank you. We'll still take more pictures, please. We'll still take more pictures. Uh, we want to conclude, but uh, may you grant me the grace to also recognize. Please, please, may we be seated. May we be seated, please. This is a pure academic program, please. Thank you. Thank you. So, permit me to quickly 
recognize our professors that are here and in no particular order, please. Professor Eugene Wana, the former Deputy Vice Chancellor of our Great University, is here. We welcome you. Professor FDC Okoye, the former Dean of Pharmacy, we welcome you. Professor Mrs. Okibo, Professor Kedelia Ebeneve, Professor Vivian Ngobo, the Dean, Professor Uche Ngobugu, former Dean, Faculty of Social Sciences, Dr. Uche Ngenebo, the Director of Business Ventures, Professor JJ Okoye, Professor and Professor Mrs. Jerry Emejulu, Professor Glad Ahaneku, the wife of the former Vice Chancellor of our university, we welcome you. Professor James Obiebunem, Professor Surveyor Ebele Mengini, the first female professor of surveying and geoinformatics in Nigeria. We welcome you. We welcome you at the IK Onwemesi, the Director of Works Services, Professor Stan Udedi, former Dean of Biosciences, Professor Ikenga Oriebunem, Professor Ernest Igwe, Professor Izundo, the former Dean of Biosciences. We welcome you. I know no. So we welcome everybody. May I call on Professor Chibweze Oparo to please come for the vote of thanks. Professor Chibweze Oparo, please. Thank you very much. Uh, let me start by appreciating the Vice Chancellor of this university, I'm the chairman of the inaugural lecture today, Professor Charles this morning. I feel represented by the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Kibo. Uh, for want of time, I want to align with the uh, already established protocol. Um, you can agree with me that that was a wonderful inaugural lecture. And um, I thank God. You can appreciate that today is particularly a good weather. Yes. All the vitamins attended, have been harassed by rain. You know, we are in rainy season. So I thank God for that. So I also thank God because he made it possible for today's event to hold. The way we observe that. And let me also Thank God for the chairman of the inaugural lecture committee, Professor Richard Mowaku, for asking me to perform this uh, assignment. Mowaku, I believe uh, you, are, you asked me to do this because I'm a member of the inaugural lecture committee. Unknown to you, I believe. I and the uh, Professor uh, Epunife, we are classmates. Yes. So you did me a favor for doing that. Uh, you may not also know that uh, I have a degree in zoology. Yes, before joining Mercy. And we are classmates. And uh, although uh, Professor Che Amazito has left, she was also my self-advisor. So I'm particularly happy for being the person that gave this program. 
And I use this opportunity also to thank uh, Professor Ekunife for this inaugural lecture because we belong to the class of 87 in zoology of Nan um, University of Nigeria. And since then, we've never had opportunity to reunite. In this inaugural lecture, she used to reunite us. And for the first time, for the first time last week, I had a discussion with a class member of that class. Yes, she did that and uh, I appreciate what women can do. Yes, she did that because myself, I've been here, that class produced three professors, myself in the medical sciences, myself and Professor Shinyar Okaga. She used this inaugural lecture to bring us together. And Professor Okaga is supposed to be here. I appreciate her effort. Uh, she, she already had a, a schedule to attend in Israel. So she's on her way to Israel. I appreciate her effort. And I also appreciate the contribution of the Dr. Mercy Ezongala. Mercy Okoli, as we call her there. Don't know whether she is able to, to talk. Okay, she joined the chat. I appreciate all her efforts. And uh, she did us proud. So, Chinyel. Angela, Ni Emejulu, we thank you. The class of 87 Department of Zoology is well in building. Yes, UNM, we thank you. All our guests, we appreciate your presence. It's my prayer that the Almighty God will lead you back to your, to your destination and all of us to continue to empower us in this academic career. May the almighty God continue to see the inaugural lecturer and her family through all other endeavors in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you all. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I think we are concluding very, very well. We'll take the closing prayer after which we take the university and then, and then the recession. So for the closing prayer, we want to invite may I invite the person that will lead us in the closing prayer, Reverend Father Andy. Uh, but uh, before he leads us, may I inform all of us of the 84th inaugural lecture is coming up on the 1st of June. 2023 and is going to be delivered by the current dean of the faculty of education our own dear professor vivian mobo congratulations in advance and then there is a, a hood here if it is your own they come and collect it at the end of the program Please may we rise for the closing prayer.
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. You created us in your own image. You endowed us with reasoning and intuition. You said that we should make this world a better place through our study, through our resources, through our endeavor. We ask that you continue to lead us in this mission. We thank you for such an incisive lecture. We thank you for all that you do in our lives. Bless those who have listened. Bless us even as we go to our various destinations. Bless the family of the lecturer. Bless all of them. As we go, may we go in your will. This is our prayer, please Christ. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Unisic song. Please, we are not moving until we conclude, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. The recession now, no movements yet in reverse order. That is recession. We are led by the Vice Chancellor. The inaugural lecturer, a chairman, followed by professors. After the professors, we have the associate professors. Followed by senior lecturers. Then lecturer one. Assistant lecturers. I'm 